and welcome to One Stop Corp Shop. This is Steve with a preview for Homeworld Fleet Command. This is a game coming up to Kickstarter. It is a space combat game. We've got two factions battling out in space, and it is scenario driven. So there's 10 scenarios in the core rulebook. And as you play through scenarios, the games will introduce more rules and get more complex as you go through them. But of course, you can replay the scenarios with the full rule set once you get used to it. It's a complex game. There's a lot of things going on with it, but we're going to walk through it with you today. Now, this is a competitive game where you can play one faction versus another faction, and you can share control of that faction. However, I'm going to show you how the solo game works in this one. So I'll be playing alone against the enemy faction, and this is based upon the video game with the same name. With that said, let's jump down to the table and see what this latest game from Odypheus plays like. Here we go. So here I have the board set up. So I jumped ahead and this is actually going to be scenario four in the rule book. Now scenario one starts off with a very basics and it gets more complex as you go. I am actually going to show you most of the rules in this playthrough as long as when they come up. I thought this was a good representation of the game and it's a pretty fun scenario, honestly. So let me go over briefly what this scenario is and kind of the basics of the game and we'll get into the nitty gritty as we play through it because as like i said there's a lot going on in this one so this scenario like i said is scenario four it's called fool's gold so the briefing is this is the kushan mothership that is the blue faction which we will be playing needs to harvest mineral rich asteroids to resupply the tight end forces the red faction in this game Wait in ambush, aiming to starve the Kushan of critical resources. For setup, we have to set up asteroids with a number of star values on the other side of it. So there's one asteroid with three stars in the back of it, six of them with two stars in the back of it, and three with no stars behind it. These scenarios do have a round limit. So how it works is our goal of this game is to earn three medals. If any faction earns three medals, the game's over and that faction wins. If the faction cannot earn those three medals within the round time limit. We'll look at who has earned the most medals at the end of the round. At the end of the rounds. If that's a tie, you look at how many have earned the most number of stars. And if that's a tie, I think there's another tiebreaker past that point. But generally, those two is enough to break to figure out who won the game. This also has new rules, which we'll go over how this works. But our objective, playing the Kushan, is two medals. If we can harvest eight stars, of resources from the asteroid fields within the 10 rounds. So on the back side of these asteroids, like I said, there are stars. So we need to find eight of those. And then we get one more medal if the mothership can survive and it has collected eight stars and it gets to the edge of a map and spends a movement action to exit the map, then we win the game. So pretty sure for, for, for us, we need to harvest eight stars and get off the board. Now the Titan are trying to obviously stop us. If they get two medals, if they destroy the mothership. Now, they cannot harvest asteroid fields. It's the only ones that can do this. They can't stop it that way. They can only destroy the mothership. And then, of course, they get one medal if they prevent the mothership from harvesting eight stars of resources. So if the game would go the whole ten rounds, we never actually got to eight stars, um, they would automatically get one medal at the end of the, end of the game. And of course, if there's a tie-in medals, we look at the number of stars. But that's what we're playing Pretty, pretty straightforward scenario, I think. Okay, let's jump down to the table and we'll do a brief overview of what we're looking at and then we'll start playing. So this game is a card-based game with dice supplement to roll. So on here we have factions. So I'll be playing the Kushan faction. And this one does say um, a once per turn ability where we can remove focus fire or cripple tokens and turn this card over uh, it can be used once per um, game Billy's used but the important thing is over here we've got two cards fanned out and one card below that this is telling us how many cards we draw at the start of our turn and how many cards during our turn we can play now this is not just limited to our faction card but all of our cards out here can add to that for example we do have a mothership with a vice admiral assigned to it. So each unit can have a leader. The leaders do provide additional cards 
to draw and play. So now we've already increased our hand size at this during this game and how many cards we can play. Now, if this unit would be destroyed with the leader on it, we would then not draw as many cards or be able to play as many cards. So you starve the other faction of those critical actions and resources. The other thing I'll mention is up here, there are a number of stars on there. If someone would to destroy this leadership, this leader, sorry, leader, who's assigned to this mothership, they would get the points for the leader plus the points for the unit. So it would get 10 points for destroying our mothership. That's how you can keep track of the stars in it. But yeah, so as you play the game, you can assign maximum one leader to a ship, or you can just play with a ship as, as a normal unit. If you notice over, let's see, this scout character, scout unit we have, we actually don't have a, a, a leader assigned to it. We just have a normal scout and we have these activation tokens. For example, this is a B activation and that is gonna match up with this blue B right here. So we know which, which card is associated to what unit on the board. And then when we activate them, we'll flip them over to show that it's taken an action. But basically, the, how the game's going to work is we will roll for initiative. We will, oh sorry, we draw, we draw up our hand size. Then we roll for initiative. And then we will take turns playing a card from my hand and resolving the effects of it. And then once you've activated all your units, you basically pass. Or if you want to pass early, you can do that. And then once both players have passed, we will discard any cards we don't want from my hand and draw and start a new round by drawing back up to our hand size and repeating the process until we win or lose. Okay, let's just start the game and we'll explain more as we go. So to figure out how to start, looking at our board, we have two cards right here for our Kushan faction card, plus four here, so we're up to six, seven, and then we have one more over here for eight. So we're going to be drawing eight cards, and then we can play one, two, three, four, five. Eight cards, we play five of them. Now we only have one, two, three, four units to activate, so we probably will only play four cards, to be honest. Or maybe even less. <laughs> but, all right, so we'll draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this deck is a common deck. Everyone draws from this deck, and this will dictate what we do during our, what we can do during our turns. Now, the enemy faction would draw a hand size as well. However, because we're playing solo, they don't draw a hand. Instead, they'll just reveal the top card of the deck and do whatever it says. Now, this game does is supposed to go in 10 rounds, and there is a round tracker up here with this round marker that can move along this path. Um, just to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm going to put the round tracker as digital above my head there. So that number 10 is how many rounds we have left in this game. Okay, we drew our cards. We can do, now do a roll off for our initiative. Now, one thing we can do for the initiative is we can discard cards from my hand to add plus one to whatever our roll is. So if we really want to go first, we can dump some of our cards to try to get better odds at that. With the, the caveat that the max you can have for initiative roll is six. So if I dump three cards and I roll a natural six, it would still be a six, not a nine, for example. If you get a tie, you do another round of initiative check until someone breaks the tie, where you can discard more cards for the second roll to see who, who gets it. To make things simple, I'm just going to roll one dice for each of us, and we'll see what happens. So this is for the enemy. They roll the four, and we roll the six. Cool, we are going first. Okay. Let's start this thing. So how this works is let's look at a simpler card here. Let's look at, yeah, this one isn't too bad. Target engines. So you see here that this will have a movement and then it has an attack symbol. Other symbols you might see in the game are reinforce. You can see that this one, which is a uh, generally triggers afterburners. So this is some some um, ships do have are more extra quick and can do extra movement. And then you can maybe find another one, which is a actually have in my hand, which is great. A power attack, which is a special attack that's written on the cards. So you can play this card for those abilities plus whatever it says on it. You can also play them 
face down as part of your played card for a basic action. Basic actions are these, where you can move, attack, reinforce, or harvest. So in the movement, let's go through them in order. So let's look at, let's see, let's go ahead and start by our scout. Our scout is actually can do a survey ability. So this is gonna help us in our, in our goal here. So let's look at this card closer. So this is our B faction um, unit. So if you look on the board here, it is gonna be mar marked with this indicator here. So here we've got six ships because looking at this card, the important thing is it tells you what type of sh ship it is and how many miniatures go along with it. So we have six fighters assigned to represent this unit. It's worth two victory points or two stars if somebody takes it out. But the other important thing is these values here. So this is the war dice. This is, you can think of it as accuracy. So when we roll dice, any sixes or higher will count as success. This is not a very accurate <laughs> the, um, unit, unfortunately. But uh, down here is the, the armor it has. So any six hits it would take, it would reduce the, those successes by this value and then take the remainder. So no armor on this one either. Uh, it's a scout ship, so I'm not surprised, right? <laughs> now, any damage you would take, you would remove a miniature from that unit. And once all those miniatures are gone, the unit's actually destroyed. So basically, this is the equivalent of the health of the unit. Down here is the movement speed. So anytime I trigger a movement for this one, it would then move three spaces, three hexes for that. So how it works is you can move, you can rotate them in any direction and move them straight line that number of spaces. Uh, the below that is the ramming speed. So if they would to ram into another enemy, you, that is how much dice it's going to roll per miniature on that ramming attack. We'll, we might see that later in the game. We're not going to focus on it for this one. But this one does have an EMP bomb. So this is its, its weapon. So most, eh, most units have a weapon. They have more than one. You can only choose one per attack. So, for example, that if we were to do this one, ignore the tech below it, we could do this movement action, which would trigger a movement speed of three, and then this would say attack, so we can do our EMP bomb, which would be a range one, that's what this symbol means right here, and this is a close quarters attack. So we'd have to be next to a target, and then we can do this attack, rolling six dice and do all the fun effects. Um, there's other effects on here, which let's not work about right now, but I'm just showing you how that works by choosing this card. Now, this is also a fast unit. What that means is some of them, for example, like this pincher attack, it says it has a lightning bolt effect. So what that means is we can trigger our afterburners for this one, which means it's the same thing as movement, except it's a special type of movement. It's an, it's an extra movement that only certain ships get. So this will let us trigger active burners, move twice and attack, and then we choose another, another unit can move move whatever it is and attack as well. So this is how you can read the cards. Um, this one also, also is evasive. So every time an enemy attacks it, because it's small and evasive, we can reroll a success that the enemy gets against this unit. But the important reason is, I want to activate this one because the last ability is survey. This is unique to this unit. After ending this unit's movement adjacent to one or more asteroid field tokens, you can look at the underside of that token and then replace them as they were. So I'm hoping to send our scout around to try to find where the good places to harvest would be because we need to find those eight, eight stars worth of, of resources. So for that, I just need to do a basic move. Um, I think what I will do, dump this card, I'm going to do it face down because it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to do a basic movement with it. So this will be my, one of my card plays. And that will trigger this B. So I want to move them where we can take a gander at as many asteroids as possible. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move them two spaces because their movement is three. I'm going to move them through this asteroid field right here. 
So let's move them here and they'll be spent. Now, I move through this asteroid field. What does that mean? We can look at this real quick. Here's the asteroid field card. Asteroid impact. Penetrating one. So the target's going to have minus one armor. We don't have an armor, so it doesn't matter here. Asteroid collisions. Units entering or activating in the asteroid field's hex must take an asteroid impact attack. So that means we're going to roll three dice, five or higher hits. <laughs> so let's see if we can't avoid these. So, um, I don't know. Well, I, I, I want to see what happens. There we go. Here we go. Five, five, five. five. That is amazing. One, one, three. Totally dodged all those asteroids. Excellent scouting. Okay, so we missed those. Actually, the nice thing about this game, it comes with these handy rule cards for all the different elements you may encounter. So after end of turn, we can now take a peek. So take a peek underneath the... Oh! Boom! Three stars. That's the big one. Definitely harvesting that one. And this one's empty. Okay. So we won't waste time here, but that's a great one to get. So that was our activation, our first one. Let's go ahead and do the enemy activation. So what we'll do is we'll flip the top card. And this is the interrupt. Now, I have some of these in my hand too. But this will allow us to play cards out of turn during the enemy faction's turn. So for example, this one says, one allied unit can attack at any time during enemy's unit's movement um, it's quick attack, quick movement or reinforcement. This attack must target the enemy unit that was activated. So basically, if someone's going to move, you can choose to place to attack them first before anything else happens. Now, how this works for the AI is they're going to just do bank it. They're going to bank it and draw another card. They can have, in this case, a bank size of hand size of two because they have a vice admiral. So for every High ranking officer for the AI, they can hold one additional card. Um, so we'll flip another one instead, and they get Evasive Pattern Delta. So they will try to now activate this card. So how this works is we'll slide this to the side, and we'll take a peek at this chart here. This tells us what the enemy behavior is gonna do. So looking at this chart, they are we're gonna find Evasive Pattern Delta Roy right down here. So it tells us what unit we should prioritize. This is going to be one of our strike units. And it's going to, it wants to go after the nearest enemy unit. And then we're going to play on the nearest unit to your forces that is vulnerable to attack. So basically, whoever is most likely to get attacked will be targeted by this card. In this case, I don't think either of them are going to be targeted. So we don't really have to worry about this one because they're kind of far away to start the game. That's going to change pretty shortly. So let's go ahead and move. Let's see, they kind of want to go towards our, our capital ship. So let's have this D1 move. So let's take a look at what they do. So here's their salvage corvette. So there's three corvettes in this one. It's the three miniatures on the board. They have one armor, two speeds, five or higher to hit, hit for accuracy. And they have prow armor. Plus one armor versus attacks that enter the front of this um, when resolving damage after ramming. So basically, if you try to ram this thing <laughs> in the front, I mean, look at this shit. Why would you try to ram that thing in the front? It's got a huge armor thing, so that's what's representing that prow armor. Also, Marines 1, it gets plus one dice on boarding action. So this is one of those ships that doesn't have any lasers. It basically just wants to ram the enemy or try to get them next to you to attack but this is the salvage corvette they have. So this one is going to move. Oh, it's going to get evasive token first. We got to do these in order. We can skip them if we want to. Place the evasive token on any unit uh, with two or more speed. So this one does count because it's got two more speed. Token remains there until the unit receives a new order. So we assign a new card to it, or it takes a focus fire action. We'll explain that later when combat happens. But this basically is going to give you the evasive one effect. So if it would get, ev anytime it's going to get attacked, it will then be able to reroll one of those dice successes against it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put that evasion token on the board right here. And put this over here. And so this guy can move two hexes. So it's going to head over here and activate. Okay. 
that is it for the enemy. Now it's our turns again. So we activated our scout. We know this was a really good spot to harvest. Now you can also move through your units. That is, that is a possibility, but you cannot end in a space with your units and you cannot move through enemy units as well. So let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and do another action, and I'm going to kind of dump another card I don't think we need. Yeah, let's go and dump this card here. I'm going to play this face down because I want to do a harvest action. So harvest action is one of the basic actions we can do in the game. It's one of these, these basic orders. So I'm doing two basic orders to start the game. Harvest is you get to do a free move. So looking at our mothership, it has a movement of two. So I'm going to move with two, and then we'll do a harvest ability. Harvest is what's going to allow us to flip over those asteroids. So you see here it says harvest three. Now this is prototype. I didn't realize this is a typo. Um, it says can harvest asteroid fields within two hexes. I think that harvest three should actually be a two, so I'm going to play as harvest two. So basically, I can get I can flip over an uh, asteroid within two hexes of it to take a peek at what it is. All right, so that is what we're trying to do. So we can move two spaces. So I'm gonna go. I can turn any direction I want, and I have to move straight lines. We'll go one, two, right down here, and then this this hex here is actually within uh, one, two of us. So let's go and pick harvest this one of course it's three stars we knew that was coming we now have three stars two or eight we need to get but so far so good and then once we harvest it we leave it face up to, so that we know we can't harvest it again okay so that was our action let's go ahead and do the enemy action so enemy is going to get another one this will cancel a interrupt so there's a way you can interrupt and interrupt Counter spell your counter spell. <laughs> then it has a weapons to maximum. So what this is going to mean? Let's take a quick peek. It says we need to activate a yellow unit. So this one will be the carrier, and it wants to go after the strongest unit in the game, which is going to be carrier is going to have to go after the mothership, and we do it as written. So this is going to be a movement with a power attack. Now, some units have a power attack, and some of them don't. Let's take a look at what that means. For example, here's a good example to look at. This is my, my ship. But here we have a regular attack, which we'll just do the two dice up here um, with all the effects. But if we have a power attack, we get this ability penetrating one. So then we have minus one to the target's armor. So this is a real simple power attack that we can't do. But the enemy would be using the carrier up here. So here's the carrier card. It actually does not have a power attack. But we could look at what it does. So it has five, uh, five accuracy, three armor, two speed, ramming. Um, it has a hull defense guns. So it will roll four dice. And it has rapid fire when attacking a strike unit. This unit can reroll one failure. So normally this could harvest, but because it's special rules, this one cannot harvest either. Um, a strike factory, it can disembark uh, unit reinforcements in adjacent hexes. And it can do two units per turn. So, and actually this one does have two interceptors in its base right now. So instead of actually activating it, we are going to do the launch tubes. That's one of the rules for the enemy is anytime they can reinforce, they will. So instead of doing this weapons to maximum, which would just be a movement for them because they don't have the ability to do the close combat, they're instead going to do a, a normal reinforcement. So what this does is it's going to send these interceptor squadrons out from it. So this is what's actually on the carrier itself. 
So each of these are going to be six fighters, and there's going to be a C, a C one, and then a D one as well. Now the D one actually has a a leader assigned to it. So this the D one is going to have an ace pilot. The units get plus two on close quarters attacks. So they're going to get instead of the normal six dice, they're going to get eight dice when they do close combat. Also, you see here, this is a power attack. So this one can do rapid fire. Could be particularly deadly if we're not careful with how that unit's gonna do. So anyway, these are gonna be added to the board and they get added to hexes adjacent to the unit that was carrying them. In this case, it was the carrier. So the carrier is going to be exhausted and then the units that pop out are gonna be exhausted as well. Okay, we go ahead and disembark those units. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when units are activated, they can't obviously receive new orders, but they can receive interrupts. So anytime, if I moved close to one of those exhausted units, they, the enemy could play this interrupt attack card to attack me first. All right, so that's their action. Let's look at what we want to do. I'm just gonna play this target engines card for now and just get the movement and attack. I'm not gonna be able to attack me with this card. But it'll just get me out there. So I'm going to move this A unit, which is the Squadron Legion Interceptor. Take a quick look at this one. It does have movement of three, critical projectile cannon, which means it has to be attacking an adjacent spot with potential to do rapid fire and it's evasive, which is pretty cool and after burner. So this is a good way of getting up close and personal and doing some damage. So I kind of get them out there. It does have a squadron leader assigned to it, which means I'll get plus one dice on close quarters attack, which it does do. So let's go ahead and just move it three. So we'll go one, two, three over here with our unit, and it's going to be exhausted. We're going to go ahead and engage this guy. Uh, does that mean this next turn? Let's see what they're going to do. They're going to do weapons to maximum which we already did. So it's going to be a blue strike unit right here. It's going to activate the only one I can do. It is going to, let's see, I don't think they can reach us with it, with that one. Nope, their speed is only two. So they're going to head this direction, move two spaces, heading, heading towards us. Okay, so looking at the board, oops, you know what? This should have been exhausted. Forgot about that, sorry about that. We do have one unit left. We're going to use that one to, yeah, we're going to use this one to play a all head full, which means one unit can move forward twice, but it has to be in a straight line and can ram, but I'm not going to bother ramming with this one. Instead, I'm just going to play to move. I'm going to move this unit one space forward. Okay, so then we have all our units activated and we did all its activation. We can then discard any cards we don't want to keep. And actually, I kind of like my cards. So I'm going to keep in my hand. Um, any cards I get played get discarded. And then we will increment the round counter. So we're now down to round nine. Okay, we still have our hand size of eight. So I've got four cards in my hand. I'm going to draw another four cards. And then we can roll for initiative. So let's see if... Oh, let's refresh these real quick. So the enemy does have a lot more units as we do, but... Hopefully we can get in and get out. A five versus our three. So they're going to go first. Let's see what they do. They're going to, this is an interrupt to attack, which they already have. They will discard this other one. Let's going to see, oh, another interrupt. And they will move on to here. Okay, target weapons. So take a quick peek. Target weapons means they are going to use the carrier once ago and it's going at the strongest unit. So it wants to move and attack as written. So the carrier is right here. It has a movement speed of two and a range of one. So it needs to be up close and personal. So it can't really do any of this stuff. It will, it will still activate. And it's going to go after the strongest unit, so it wants to go after our mothership. So let's try and get them heading that direction. So one, two, and it'll activate down here. It's going to come down this way, try to maneuver through this asteroid field to head towards our mothership. Okay, that's their action. Let's look at ours. 
we can definitely do some damage here. Okay, I kind of would like the enemies to move a little bit closer because I have an attack. I'm just waiting to spring on them. So instead, I want to use the mothership and I want to try to do some harvesting again. So I'm going to go ahead and play a card face down to do the harvest action. Now remember, I can move up to movement value or do free move and then do a harvest. So it's going to be a blind harvest. I don't know what's around here, but I'll go, let's see, I'll go one, two, this direction. And let's activate this and let's go and harvest this spot here. All right. Awesome. Sweet. We have five of the eight we need. So we're real happy about that one. Okay. Let's see what the enemy is going to do. It wants to do interrupt move. Now, one thing I didn't mention is it will keep a bank of these, but it has priority. The priority is interrupt attack is what it wants. So it has two of those. It's not going to take another one. I keep going through the deck to find a new card. Target engines is what it wants to do now. So we'll take a quick peek at what that is. Uh, strongest, it wants to go after any yellow units, which it doesn't have, so it's going to work to pick a blue unit that can do it. And we'll go after the strongest one. So I think that is going to be... Yeah, it's probably going to be our D, their D unit, which is going to be the Salvage Corvette can, can do it. So this one says, if the attack scores at least one success against any unit type other than the uh, Fighter Strikers, uh, before the armor reduction, you get to put a crippled engine token on that unit. What does that mean? It says crippled engines unit has one movement uh, until this token is removed. So they can only scoot once each for each movement action they get. But this one won't matter because we're going to choose this one here because it can actually attack our A unit. So looking at the board, this C unit, this one has a movement of a sp speed of three can actually get up to us and attack us. So that's what they're going to do. So this C unit is going to move, and this is their their interceptors that they deployed last time. Move up here, and then they're going to attack. So this, because it's attacking a strike fighter, we don't worry about the crippled engines because they're too small, but we do the normal attack. So what this is, is it's five or higher, and they roll one dice, close combat, for one dice per unit, so they have six. So it can be six, um, six of six dice with a five or higher to hit coming at us. And we don't really have anything we do <laughs> against that. So we're just gonna take it. So let's see what happens with our the six dice. Now they do have rapid fire. When attacking a blue unit, this unit we can reroll re in failure. So it's going to have one reroll. But looking at our A, which is going to be our interceptor squadron, it is also evasive. Evasive one. So the evasive one is going to counteract the rapid fire on this interceptor unit. So no rerolls against it. So let's see what happens. Six dice, no rerolls, needs a fire higher to hit. Here we go. That is absolutely horrible. We would get, looks like we got three hits on us. We don't have any armor, so we're going to lose three of our, three of our units. However, I do have a interrupt, restore, restore one destroyed fighter. So instead of losing three, we're going to just lose two of those. So two of those are now gone. Okay. A is done. Now it's our turn. And I was waiting for that to happen because I want to do some, some fun here. Play stay in formation. So we can move and attack, and the second unit can can move and attack only if we can target that same unit. So this one's right next to it, so it's going to resolve that one first. So they're going to attack the Cs here. Now, I do have the squadron leader. Squadron leader says it gets plus one on close quarters attacks, which it's going to get right now because that's our A, A unit. So we're going to get, looking at our card, one dice per miniature. So we only have four out there. So we get four dice. You need five or higher to hit, but we get plus one. So we're going to have five dice with a five or higher to hit. No rerolls, unfortunately. So here we go. Five dice. Let's see if we can't do some damage back to them. We get one hit on them. Okay. 
Not great, but to start. Uh, so they are lost one ship. Now we also rolled a one. So in this game, anytime you roll one, you will be able to put on one of these focus fires on it. Focus fire, it says this unit now gets minus one armor and has minus one defensive attack back at any attack back. We haven't seen this really happen yet. Now this fighter unit, it doesn't have any armor and this is not gonna matter for those units. It's generally for the bigger units that as you keep attacking them, you will wear them down, eventually overcome the armor and take them out. So that was that one. Now the second unit can use lightning to move as well. So that is going to be our our scout ship right here. A scout ship has active burners too, so you can move it two spaces. So they will jump around or jump across this asteroid into this spot right here to activate. I'm just gonna move around this way because it's hard to pick them all up. So activate them, and this guy's activated as well. And they're going to do an attack. Now before we get a chance to attack, because we moved, guess what? This one, can, they can play a interrupt attack right now to attack us first. However, we have interrupt counterintelligence, we can cancel that right now. So before they can attack us, we don't worry about it, let's go ahead and do the roll. Our roll is going to be, let's look at what we're going up against. Unfortunately, it's our scouts, so not very strong. Because they have six or higher to hit, only one dice for each of those six units. So six dice need a six. And then the enemy does get its evasive because we don't have rapid fire. So we'll look for sixes. <laughs> we gotta reroll any sixes we get. Or one six we get. We get nothing. So that was a that was a, a botch, unfortunately. Okay. Now it's our turn, so let's go ahead and move on to the enemy turn. It wants to do weapons to maximum. Looking at what this will target, it's going to target um, a looks like a yellow unit, which we don't have. So it's going to have the strongest as written. So it's going to move and do a close combat attack if it can. That's probably going to be yeah. It's going to be the the D unit would would be the one if it can. So this one up here, it has a movement speed of three. And it has to move in a straight line, so I don't think it can even get to anybody. Nope, it can't get to anybody. This one can. This one can. So it's going to move. Yeah, it's going to move here. Because it got ordered, the evasion token is now gone. And then it's going to target this. It would target the strongest one, though. Two, three. So because it can't do any of those, it's just going to go after whatever it can hit. It's going to go after this unit, the A unit. So no power attack. It can't actually attack, unfortunately. Um, that is basically it for them. They're just going to get in, in our face. They're ready to attack. Okay, our turn. Okay, I'm just going to play a normal basic operation. And I'm going to have our Corvette just move up here to try to get within area of this battle here. <laughs> so don't want to drive through any asteroids with them if I don't need to. Okay. Let's go ahead and see. They have two other units need to activate. So they're going to do target weapons, which I believe is another. Yep, I want to do another Corvette, uh, another yellow, which it can't. It doesn't have anything it could hit. Target weapons. It wants to go with the strongest unit that it can hit. So I think what the option is, is going to be the Salvage Commander. Nope, can't hit anybody. Yep, no one can hit anybody with this card. Okay, so they'll probably just instead move towards the big guy. One, two. That's what they can do. And they're activated. I don't have anybody else to activate. So we'll do the final one for them. It's going to be Brace for Impact. So this one, of course, is going to be the last unit to go. It is going to go for the nearest unit it can. So it's going to place a Brace for Impact token on any unit card except for a Striker Fighter, which unfortunately is the last one, so it's not going to do anything because it can't get that token. If it did, it would get plus one armor. Okay, so it's going to move or attack. They're just going to move, and that 
fighter squadron has a speed of three, so they would go towards probably this way. One, two, three. Okay. Breaking off, heading towards the mothership. Okay, that is going to be it. Let's go ahead and take our round marker down, down to eight, and let's keep going. So let's go ahead and draw up our hand size. I kind of like what I have. If I can make it work, one actually, I'm gonna give her two of these cards. I don't need two of them. Okay, here we go. Draw, draw up to my seven. Still haven't lost any units yet, but that could very well change. And do the roll off for initiative. Enemy is going four. We are going one. So enemy is gonna go first. Let's see what they do. They are going to interrupt move, which will bank, and then they're going to do weapons to maximum. So this is. The cruiser wants to go at the strongest unit as written. So the cruiser is right here. Oh, let me refresh all of these for us as we keep going through this. So the cruiser wants to get over here to our mothership. It has a speed of two. And it doesn't have a power attack. That's okay. It still wants to get over there. It could try to get onto this asteroid and head this direction. Next turn. That might make it's a little risky. But they can heal. Or avoid focus fire. Yeah, most likely they'll be fine driving onto this. It's very risky though. Let's not be that risky. Let's move here and then we'll we'll call call it good. So they're done with their cruise their carrier. Now our turns. So let's see what we can do. Okay, let's go ahead and do weapons to maximum as our ability, movement, and a power attack. So I definitely want to do our interceptor for what is that? heavy corvette. So it can move two spaces, and it has a range of two actually with a turret. So let's go ahead and have them move one, two, right here, right behind our units down there. They're going to be activated, and they're going to... Because they can fire two, they can target this up here. And because it's along the middle line, we can actually target either side. So we can avoid our unit here and hit them um, with our attack. So it's going to be two dice per unit. So because there's three of them, we're going to roll six dice. Hit on a five, five or higher. And because of the power attack, we have minus one to the armor of that. They actually have armor, so we're going to negate that. So, six dice. Here we go. Let's see if we can't do some damage on their, their uh, Corvettes. Um, one hits, and we get, unfortunately, just one. Just one. Looking at what they have... Um, they do have armor. They would stop that normally, but they do take a hit. So that one hit would take out one of their miniatures. Boom. This also means they get focus fire, which is great because now subsequent attacks will ignore their armor. So not the greatest roll, but hey, we got, we got something going for us. Let's see what happens next. We have evasive pattern delta. So this one would also be on the cruiser if we can, but we can't choose that one. So instead it's going to be on... So this one wants to go on a blue unit and wants to go after the nearest target that is vulnerable to attack. Um, that would probably be... That could be any of them, to be honest. Well, this one is pretty vulnerable to attack, so maybe we'll just do that one. So put evasive token on him again. So we want to activate this guy. For sure. But before activating them, we can do a damage control check. So we roll one die, and for them, it's a five or higher to be successful. But it is. So we do remove this focus fire. That's how that works. So then they're going to put the evasive token on them, and they're going to move. They are probably going to stay there, honestly. So they've got targets they can hit next time. So we'll leave at that. So unfortunately, our focus is now gone, but we, tr we tried. <laughs> we tried. Okay, our turn. We do need to get this harvested. We also have this battle going on. <laughs> we need to worry about two. Um, I think 
probably let's try and hammer in on this fighter squadron if we can't do it. Can't make it work here. So let's do stay in formation. Our A unit can attack those guys. So they get plus one to close quarters attack. So they had we're only four dice. And then the second one um, will be able to attack as well. So four dice, and it's gonna be five or higher to hit. Um, actually they get plus one, so it'll be five dice. And rapid fire against the C, which has evasive. So five dice can't reroll. Here we go. Five or higher to hit. One. Just one. Okay, took out one of them. Really trying to hit those guys. And then we'll do the next one, which will be our B1 right here. They need six or higher to hit, unfortunately. But they do have six dice. Let's see what they can do. Got one. Can we have to reroll it because the evasion it still hits? Okay, look at that. Whittling them down. So those two guys activated. Oh, this one activated. Forgot to flip that one. And now it's the enemy's turn. They will do a brace for impact. So what they are trying to target is the cruiser, which they can't. They will target probably this other one right here, the C one. So they will get one armor for that brace. So they are going to move. C can move two spaces. So one, two. Here they come. And they're braced for impact. They get one more armor. Okay. It is our turn. Kind of don't have anything else we can do. Because we only have our our big ship left. And I think for ours, we don't have we don't have our main guy to use our mothership. So I'll move one, two. And we'll do harvest action. We'll harvest down here. For two more. We're up to seven. We need one more. And we know what one more is. Okay. That is it for their turn. We will now see what the enemy is going to do. They do have two more units to activate. This is interrupt attack, which they will bank. And here they do weapons to maximum. So this one is going to target. Um, they're both activated. So it's going to do the strongest unit is what it wants to do. So it's probably going to target any unit they can actually attack that is. So these guys can move, haven't activated, these guys haven't activated. So maybe the D guys would go. Yes, they probably... Actually, I lied. These C guys have a power attack. This is perfect. They will attack, attack the strongest guys right here. So let's take a look at what they do. They're not going to move because they don't need to, but they do have Rapid Fire 2. So this will be Rapid Fire 3 against the strongest unit, which are our scouts. This is a this is a power attack. So this can be three dice, but the can reroll successes three times. Or sorry, normally three times, but only twice because we have evasive one on our scouts. So they can reroll two misses. So these two miss, they can reroll those two. And it's only one hit. And our scouts will just take a hit, unfortunately. Okay. That is it. We have one more unit to activate. That's right here. They are going to power attack, which they cannot do. And they have afterburners for D. They do not they do have afterburners, so they move two. And then they will try attacking. Oh wait, they can't do that one, so they would do the bomb one. This is a second unit. So they would go one, two, and they're just getting a range of our for our mothership. Okay. That is it. Let's go ahead and discard a card we don't want, which is probably, honestly, most of them. And then let's go and refresh all these tokens. Oh, forgot to refresh that one. Spin that one. And let's go ahead and drop our counters down to seven. Okay, here we go. Draw up our hand size again. And let's roll for initiative. Bad guys. So do we want to go first at all? Do we want to discard a card for that? Oh, I'm worried about this. I'm really worried about this. I need to get our guys down here. Maybe we want to go first. Maybe. 
Because I'm worried about this grouping here. Because I know that this up here was a was a, a good one to harvest. So we could move here, harvest, and then turn around and try sprint backwards next turn. We just have to survive. <laughs> we have to survive the kicker. Uh, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. Let's see what happens. They roll a four. We're going to roll a four. So let's do another roll off. Bad guys are going to go three, and we're going to go five. We're going first. Okay. Here we go. I think we we got to go for the win here. So I'm going to play an order due to harvest. I remember this one was a good one. So let's move up here. Flip it over. Harvest gets within two range. So we got it. So now we have our eight stars. We have to get them off the board to win. But <laughs> somehow to survive. That's it. Here comes the pain. Oh, actually, they can do interrupt attack right now. Uh, because we moved, they can attack us for free. And that's going to be the C one. Which is going to be... They don't have any primary weapons, actually. So they're going to try to ram us next turn. So they're not going to do anything. They, they can't do a legal attack. Never mind. Not going to attack us. Here we go. Target maze. So... This one, so target base is going to be the the capital ship. Wants to do this, so it's a move and attack. Go after the nearest carrier. Yeah, so definitely going after this guy if possible. So let's see. He can he can turn and he can move two spaces. One, two, right here, and his range is one. So he can't quite shoot us, fortunately, but he's getting close. Okay, that's all that's happening there. It is our turns. I think what we need to do... I mean, they're in trouble, but they can just turn around and run away. I, I think I want to deal with those guys up front here. The other thing we can do is we can try to redirect down south. Okay, we want to do a target engine. So let's do this maneuver. So one... Um, and it's going to do attack. So we're going to move these guys, they move two down here. They're going to go through the asteroid. So we got to do an asteroid check. So the asteroid check says we need to roll three dice and any five or higher will hit us. Now, we do have, so let's roll that first. Okay, nothing happened, so great. Now, if this would have hit, let's say we got a hit there, we do have on this, on that character or that unit, this defensive roll ability. That's what that symbol there means. That we would actually roll dice and any success we get, we can counter or reduce the dice pool of, of the asteroid. So basically we shoot the asteroid before they hit us on any close combat attacks. So we'll move down there. They are ready to go. We're gonna roll six dice, which is awesome. And we need a five or higher to hit. Now, because we are targeting engines, we will hopefully shut down the engines of that unit. You do get plus one armor, but that's okay. Here we go. One, two hits. I went bump, sorry. Two hits. So they do have two armor. So unfortunately, we didn't go through them, but we got successful hits. So we do get to put a engine marker on it. So their engine speed is now one, which is just what I wanted. So that'll hopefully allow this one to escape without being chased. All right, that's it. Here we go. Next turn. Next is Hammer Anvil. They want to tar target the same unit. Unfortunately, I can't have two units attack the same target with these abilities. It makes sense. So they're going to get one attack, basically. We Let's make it interesting. Let's. Ha I think it might make sense for this one. Let's look at what they want to target, actually. Hammer Anvil, they want to go after the weakest unit. So with that said, it will probably go after our A unit up there. And it's going to be a power attack, which we can do with the C. They have this fighter squadron does have rapid fire. So it'll be three rapid fire against that unit. Let's do that. So that unit does have evasion one. So it's be two successful two rerolls against it. So they have rolling three dice, they need five or higher to hit, and they can reroll two misses. That's 
a lot of misses. Let me roll these two. Got one. So they took out one of our ships. Okay. That is that. And that was the C. Okay, our turn. Let's go ahead and see if we can do some more damage here. Let's do a pincer attack. Uh, they can, if they can target the same unit, they will do so. So we'll we'll try to get some revenge. We'll do this A here and then this B there as well. Target the same guy. So this first one, it does, ooh, that's actually, they get plus one on close combat attack, which is pretty nice. So they only roll three dice, but we have one more plus four. And let's see what happens. I need a five or higher to hit. Here we go. They got one. So took out one of those ships. And the second one will it needs to get a <laughs> it's really a lot of dice. Five dice, but unfortunately it needs a six or higher to hit. <laughs> so not great. And I have to re-roll because it's evasive against it. But come on. Knee sixes. Knee sixes. That's not gonna do it. Okay. Eh, we tried. So that was those two. See what the enemy's going to do. They're going to bank this repair card. And then they're going to do target bays. Target bays wants to go after the nearest carrier. Yeah, so it's going to want to use... So our D unit here. Oh, which is really bad because they are ace. Look at that. They get plus two on close quarters attacks. So they're going to run up here. One, two. <clears throat> and they're going to do an attack against the mothership. So looking at what they have, they're a full force. <laughs> full force. They roll six dice, five are hard to hit. They do have rapid. Oh, actually, rapid fire is not going to matter for this one. That far, it's not going to matter. But they do get plus two to their total roll. So they're going to roll eight dice against our mothership. Our mothership has five armor. <laughs> this might be it, guys. Here we go. Eight dice against our mothership. Our mothership can't do anything against it. Nope. Nope. Let's see what happens. One, two. So those two would hit, but I've got five armor, so that does stop those hits. However, one, two will give us two focus fire. So now our armor's by minus two, thanks to that first attack. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now our bays are crippled as well. That's what that means. So it's not going to matter for this one because I don't have anything in the bays, but we'll keep it consistent by putting a bay token on there. So it means we can't disembark unit from the bays until we get rid of it by doing a damage control check, which we could do later on. Okay. Our turn. We have... Ooh, this one's been activated. That's, we are... We're all done. It's, it's just up to the enemy. So the enemy has got these two units left. So, as this one, place the, these uh, lock token on any unit except for fighter units, which unfortunately, oh, no, neither are my fighter units. So they will get, okay. So this is going to go away. It's going to do a movement. It's, these guys are going to ram into our mothership. Okay. The rest of the card's not going to matter a whole lot. We'll, this is the only fourth boarding action. We're not doing a, doing a boarding action, but we'll put it on there anyway. So, this this plow here. Oh, we actually get a plus one on damage control checks. So, we're going to do see if they can't knock off the engine marker. And they do. They do. They get rid of that one. So, two successes. We'll get rid of that. Okay. So, now they're going to use that movement to ram into us. So, here's what's happening ramming. Because there are three miniatures... The, and they each roll two dice. We're going to have six dice against us, and we have minus two armor. So this is not looking good at all. <laughs> so let's roll those six dice, and hopefully they don't take us out. Because it's going to be basically game. There we go. Roll the dice. One, two, three, four hits. Four hits. Two are currently... We had five armor, minus two, so we only have three... 
three stops and one goes through. That blows up our mothership. It is now gone. <laughs> oh! Oh, that hurts so much. Oh, we harvest everything too. So, seven plus the three is going to be ten victory points for the enemy. That's what I get for being aggressive. So, they're gone. Oh, no. Oh, that hurt. Now, despite the fact of being destroyed, I do get to roll double my armor as an attack against it to see how far we hit back. So, it would be a five or higher to hit. Yeah, five or higher to hit. So let's see if we do some damage back to them. We would hit once, potentially. And they have armor against that, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, just took us out. Those, those vets, I tell you, look at that nasty plow. Just destroyed us. Okay. Let's take a quick peek at, since that mat matters a lot in this game. Um, we did get the two badges. We won't get the third one. Now, they just destroyed the mothership. So they got two badges as well. So we're at two badges each. It's just coming down to two stars. That's what it comes down to. They currently have ten, so we just have to destroy each other's ships. That's what it means. Oh, but they got ten victory points. Oh, man. What can we do to catch up? We're in... Can we catch up? We can catch up. We, we're, in, we're in a lot of trouble here. Okay. So they activated. We have another unit up there to activate. It's going to be ship assault. This is going to try to do a boarding action, which they can't board. So they're not going to do anything, unfortunately. Or fortunate for us, I guess. Okay. Ouch. Ouch. Random blew us up. Okay, let's keep going. So we just got to go by points here. And I think we're in a lot of trouble. So let's go and reactivate these. And we get less cards now. So we're only going to get four cards. And we can only play three. Okay, let's do the roll off. So he goes first. We have a five here and a four here. They're going first. Let's see what horrible things happen to us. They're getting interrupt repairs, which they wouldn't keep. Followed by ooh, interrupt attack, which they would keep. And then they, all the interrupts, apparently. They're going to do weapons to maximum. So weapons to maximum, they want to do the carrier. And they're going to target the strongest unit. Okay. The strongest unit probably, oh, definitely is this. Definitely is our heavy corvette group. So they're going to move. They don't have a power attack, though. They don't have a power attack. I think they would do a different unit with a power attack if it had it. Which they do have with the Interceptor. Your Interceptor group, group C and D, has a power attack. So I would think that this one's at full health still. This group here would want to come after them. So this D group is going to move up here. And do a power attack against A. Right here. So their power attack is going to be a rapid fire 2. In addition to the rapid fire 1. Because this is right unit. Yeah, this is going to be a huge attack against us. So they actually at full strength. Oh no, they're actually at plus 2 due to close combat attacks as well. So they're going to be rolling... Eight dice, and they get to re-roll three blanks. <laughs> oh, no. No. I have nothing to stop it to. No. Against our vets, they have one armor. Ooh. They actually have defensive attack. Because this is a close combat attack, I get attack first. For once. <laughs> okay, so I get to roll six dice before they do their attack. Okay, so let's see what happens here. And I need a 5 or higher to hit. That is not how you do that at all. That is absolutely whiff. Okay, now they're going to do their 8 attack against me. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and they need a five or higher to hit and they can re-roll three blanks. Or three misses. So one, two, I want to keep that for sure. And they would roll these three, basically. So let's see what happens. Another hit. Okay. So these three hit. Looking at our ship, we do have, this is our A. We do have one armor. So that's going to stop one of those hits. And the other two are going to go through. And then that one is going to cause focus fire onto it. Okay. So <laughs> they're just sitting ducks now. They're just sitting ducks. Oh, oh boy. This is not looking good at all. Okay. Our turn. <laughs> Okay, let's try to take out these guys here, because at least those guys I might be able to take out? I don't know. Do you know the pincher? I've been doing this all game, though. This pincher attack's not been working in my favor. Let's let's try something a little bit different. I'm going to move this unit up here and this unit right behind here, and they're both going to attack that guy instead. So A unit, which is going to get plus one due to close combat. So it's going to be three dice plus one, so four. And you have five or higher to hit. Here we go. That is two hits against their unit, which does have one armor. So one of them is destroyed. No, no misses on that one. Okay. And then the next unit is going to attack again against them. So I get to roll five dice. Any sixes. And they, I don't get to, re, I don't have to reroll my blanks, which is nice. So here we go. Need a six. Need a six. Need a six. Boom! One armor. The one goes through. Took them out. There we go. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. Okay. And that is going to give us two points. So we're on the board. Not great, but we're at least on the board. They're going to do target weapons. So let's see what that is. That is going to go off the strongest unit they can. The strongest unit is probably going to be right here, I'm guessing. So they're just going to attack, attack. So they actually get rapid fire against it. And they're rolling just two dice. Two dice. Rapid fire one. Actually, that one is evasive, so they don't get to reroll anything. It's just two dice, and they need a five or hard hit. They get one of them. Okay. One ship is gone. I have no units. Oh, I have this one unit activated, I guess. Let's do a damage control check <laughs> while we can. So, luckily, that one does get plus one. So, I need a five or six. Did not get it. I don't get to knock off that focus, unfortunately. Okay, we're going to do Deploy Engineers. Let's go ahead and... We get to remove a Focus Fire. And then either... So let's go ahead and do that. Get rid of this token. And then I get to do Attack. So this one actually does have a range attack. Range of two. So we can actually hit this carrier here. Question is, do we... Let's try for it. Let's try for it. Okay, I need a five... <laughs> I need, a, I need to roll one dice. I need a five or six to try to hit that. I'm probably not going to do damage to it, but I'm hopefully get a one or two. That is not helpful at all. Okay, so that's done. And we are probably done. Here we go. Brace for impact. <laughs> it is going to want to go after the nearest ship. So that is probably going to be the C ones, actually. Yeah, so these guys are going to turn around and they're going to want to come after us. They get a brace token and they're going to, well, this is now gone actually. Get plus one armor. They're just gonna ram us. That's exactly what they're gonna do. They're trying to ram into us and see what happens. So as a reminder, they actually have Two, they're at full strength. They're going to roll two ram dice with three, so six dice. And they have armor. A lot of armor. So, 
Six dice as they ram into us. Here we go. And we have just one armor. Just one armor. <laughs> this three. Boom. No, no. Oh, no. That's going to be four victory points for them. Oh, man. And we get to roll one die against them. It can't even hit him. It can't even hit him. Okay, four more points for them. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, I calculated it out, and if they destroy one more of our ships, there's no way you can win. Mathematically. We can't catch up on the points. <laughs> Let's see what the carry is going to do. It is going to deploy engineers, so it's going to move or attack. It is... Yeah, they're just going to probably take it take it easy here and then we move one two over here okay that's it next round next round guys here we go reset we got two units left okay let's do the initiative they're going first and this is probably defeat all right let's see what happens we have hammer and anvil so the second unit can attack only can target the, the, the same unit as the first unit. So a power attack. Can they do a power attack? Yes, they can. This intercepted group can attack this unit here, and then I'll, this guy can actually get over here to attack them as well. So let's let's see what happens. This unit is going to have rapid fire three against our scouts, which have evasive one, so they're going to roll two dice against us. Uh, that is also their... Yeah, so three dice against us. So they're going to be rolling only two dice, but they can roll three times. Here we go. See what happens. No, nothing. Let's roll twice. Oh, got two hits, and that's all they needed, really. They can't get any more hits out of that. So, and we are going to lose two ships on our scout group. One, two. Okay. And now, what we they can do is this group down here actually has afterburners. It's the same type of group. So they're going to go one, two, they're going to go onto the asteroid. So by moving onto the asteroid, they're going to get a little bit of cover fire. If we shoot through it, but it's not going to matter because do a close combat attack here. Now they do have to roll for their, um, the asteroid itself. So they can roll three dice and see if they lose any ships. They would lose one ship. By th flying through the asteroid. Not going to matter, I think, for them. They also have plus two. Because this is the unit that has the uh, ace pilot on it. So that one's expended. This one's going to be expended. So they're going to roll five, six, seven dice against this. And they get to re-roll. Nope, they don't get re-roll anything. So seven dice, no re-rolls. And they need a five or six to hit us. One, two, three. That will take out that group. And that is the last points they needed, so we cannot win the game. That's going to end this playthrough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a loss. Oh, boy. So that was Homeworld Fleet Command. There's a lot going on in the game. Hopefully, it kind of made sense. Now, the one thing it didn't quite show is, especially with the carriers, if you attack them from behind, they don't get a lot of bonuses on their defensive rules, for example. So the facing does matter in this one on um, for some of the units as well. So there's something I could try to do, try to sneak around behind them. Didn't do a very good job there. I also was pretty aggressive with my, my mother ships off by themselves. Uh, but it hopefully was a fun play for you to watch. If you have any questions on how this works, let me know in the comment section below. I will mention that you can buy multiple sets of these and combine the boards into big battles, combine all these different ships if you want to go that route. But go ahead and take a look at this on Kickstarter. And thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next stop. Bye-bye.